The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Live from the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. get to a couple of clips here and then I'm going to give the number out. I want to talk about immigration. I mean, I want to talk about 30 million Americans going down to Mexico and getting given free health care, have their babies for free, and, and, and then say that Mexico belongs to the United States. I want to discuss that. I want to ask why American hospitality has been uh, distorted to this point. And then we'll hear the argument, well, from Texas to California belong to Mexico. Well, yeah, and uh, California belonged to the Russians at one time before that. Uh, and they're not claiming it. And Texas belonged to three other countries before Mexico even had it. Spain, France. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. The truth is Mexico couldn't take over the Southwest from the Comanche. That's the reality of what happened. And so they brought in the Tennessee settlers to have a war. And, and, and again, I, I, I 
was on both sides of that. Uh, it's not like the movies sit there and tell you. There were battles between the Native Americans and the settlers in Illinois and down into Tennessee and, and all across uh, the nation. If you go back to the 1820s and 30s, where tens of thousands would die a week, where you'd have 100,000 natives come down, um, led by, um, they were all intermarried and stuff. They called them at the time half-breeds. I say that because the leader of one of the groups, I forget his name, was like a six-foot-five, huge uh, half-breed guy. And um, they would just wipe out whole cities. And so that's the type of stuff that went on. And so I don't blame Mexico for not being able to conquer the Southwest. Mexico just said, all right, you guys just wiped out everybody in the uh, Midwest. Uh, come on down here. And so that's basically what happened. And, of course, all the natives weren't killed, even though I had some uh, family uh, who was in the Trail of Tears. Um, a lot of them just intermarried. And, and that's basically why most people in Texas, if they're originally from Texas, have Native American blood in them. Because most people just ended up intermarrying. Uh, it was the warlike tribes, though, that, that, that got annihilated, like the Comanche and the Apache uh, and folks like that, because they wouldn't give up, which, which I'm not knocking. I mean, uh, a lot of those people are my ancestors. The whole point is, is that this is the nature of cultural collisions, and the globalists are manipulating that right now. So just get real, everybody, about what's really happening, what's really going on here. Uh, now, again, if we had 30 million illegals here who were libertarians and who didn't take welfare, we didn't have a socialist, globalist government, and they were pro-gun, uh, quite frankly, we need 30 million people. We've aborted 55 million blacks, Hispanics, whites. We've aborted the people that were already here. Uh, and so, quite frankly, you've got to have 2.1 adults for every, uh, uh, 2.1 births for every uh, family for every man and woman, or you do not have replacement rate, and society then starts collapsing. Social Security can't be paid for, you name it. The problem is they're not even bringing the illegals in to ever pay for that. They plan to bankrupt everybody and just convert us to a collapsed third world nation like Brazil or like Paraguay. And before a lot of you want us to be Latin America, uh, I suggest you go to Latin American cities. If you like to see sewage running down the road and uh, naked babies running around the streets and disease and death, I mean, it's scary. It's sad. It's bad. And we're not building up those nations. We are deindustrializing them while they build industrial zones and pay people a dollar an hour if they're lucky. So make no mistake, just like Obamacare, that minorities in polls are wildly still in support of. This is a screw job for everybody. The globalists are for it, just like they were for the Iraq war, just like they're for backing Al-Qaeda in Syria. Just everything they're for is bad. It's just like they're for NAFTA and GATT and all these new TPP deals and the rest of it. What the globalists stand for is bad, period. A total free number to join us to talk about the North American Union and really the end of America. If they pass this, uh, they've already been issuing for years this North American ID. Uh, and uh, it'll be selectively enforced. You, you won't have any rights in Mexico, but they'll have all the rights in the world up here. You won't have any rights in Canada. It's, it's only the U.S. that's going to be overrun. And uh, I want to get your take on this. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And MSNBC and CNN tell the majority minorities over and over again, well, you're going to win when you get the guns, when you take the guns. You're going to win when we bring in the socialism. You're going to win when you get to bring in your families. Oh, yeah, you're going to win, all right. You're going to have nowhere to run. Because America is going to look just like any other third world country in Eastern Europe or in the poorer areas of Asia. I mean, we're done. And the globalists will live in their walled-off central city areas and their rural, you know, controlled zones with police everywhere. And then all the rest of us are going to live in abject poverty. Let me tell you, Americans are already working two, three jobs, eating bad food. I mean, I drove down to the University of Texas area yesterday because I tried to bypass some traffic out doing some paperwork and got stuck in traffic for an hour, going about five miles. And I got to look at the people of America. And let me tell you, people aren't looking too hot. People aren't looking too healthy. They're not looking too smart either. 
And I don't care if they were black, white, Hispanic. People look like they've been run over. Like they've been put in a microwave oven. Like they've been drinking toxic waste or something. And let me tell you, they have been. And let me tell something, uh, the, the population out there something uh, they need to know as well. The globalists with the singularity and the population reduction. El Norte is not going to be some Hispanic palace in some Hispanic kingdom 25, 30 years from now. The globalists do plan to release bioweapons and reduce population. They do plan in bringing in martial law and world government. And all of us are under attack. All of us are being scientifically targeted. All of us are having poison fluoride put in our water. All of us are having Obamacare written by offshore ruthless crime syndicates uh, literally hammering us. All of us are under New World Order conditioning. And it doesn't matter because even if we're all under attack, even if the reality says it's all part of a globalist game, for people put into racial politics and tribal politics, which has been real since the beginning of our species, we are primitively designed and hardwired to be tribal. And because we're not tribal about private property, because we're not tribal about sticking up for the underdog, because we're not tribal about standing up for the family, because we're not tribal about keeping control of government, because we're not tribal about buying local, because we're not tribal about common sense and being territorial, because we don't stick together as humans against the globalist, we're going to lose, they're going to win. And I didn't finish telling this story. I'm going to tell the story and then give the number out. I'll, take, I'll give the number out now. It's 800 259-9231, First time callers, I haven't done that in a few weeks. First time callers, by the way, 800-259-9231. But let me tell you how we're all under attack. One of my good friend's daughters basically collapsed about a week and a half ago. And they took her to Dell Children's Medical Center. And they went in there, and the place was packed with small children. And the nurses and doctors told them, yes, we've never seen something like this. We're seeing hundreds of children a week that are hundreds. They're even talking about building emergency tents outside. They've done that before for the fake flu deal, who are coming down with type 1 diabetes. And they go, well, it's genetic. But being sick triggers it, and whatever virus is going around, the hospitals are all full of two- and three-year-olds. And when he was telling me this, I had a little click, and I didn't say it, and he, and he said to me, he goes, you know, I think it's the virus that is doing it. If they say that it's genetic and nobody in my family or my wife's family, he was saying, has ever had type 1 diabetes, why is it an epidemic? I don't buy that. And he goes, I think it's the virus. Well, the doctors said the virus triggered it, but they've been told in policy to not tell people that it's viral pancreatitis. So I called my dad, who's a smart guy and an oral surgeon and a doctor, but also a chemist, a dentist. And I said, Dad, isn't there some kind of thing, uh, disease, that, 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 and it's temporary usually, in the pancreas caused by viruses? Just like you can get the mumps in the face and have your face swell up. Because, you know, I, I knew this knowledge, but you, you forget the details. And he goes, yeah, that's viral pancreatitis. There's hundreds of types of it, hundreds of known viral strains. Most of the time, uh, the pancreas comes back in a few weeks to a few months, uh, especially if they give them some of the right treatments and the right diet. But they don't let any of the doctors say that because uh, Big Pharma makes too much money off of the um, diabetes medications. And I went, thank you. So I went online, checked it, called him back, and I said, it's viral pancreatitis. That could be what it is. Well, undoubtedly, it's viral pancreatitis. The kids get a virus, then suddenly their, their, their pancreas stops working. That's like saying you're, you're susceptible to the bubonic plague genetically, so one person dies, the other doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's still the bubonic plague bacteria that's killing you. Just like some people are more susceptible to smallpox than others. It doesn't matter if you're genetically not as resistant to it. Still, it's the smallpox that's making you sick. That's why they say everything's genetic now, so they can ignore the real cause of it. 
Sure, there are some people you can shoot three or four times in the chest, 